So welcome to August and the beginning of the fifth month of the pandemic lockdown. A few days ago, as I was considering which performance from our video archives to feature in this week's musical care package, I found myself thinking about the artistic and musical world that existed at the time of the last big pandemic, the Spanish flu of 1918. And I suddenly remembered that Stravinsky's chamber theater masterpiece, The Soldier's Tale, which we presented here in Ridgewood last December, was composed and premiered in Switzerland at exactly that time. When World War I broke out in 1914, Stravinsky and his family had already left their country home in Ukraine, and they were taking refuge in the picturesque Swiss village of Clairin, where he had composed the Rite of Spring a couple of seasons before. The following year, they moved to the similarly idyllic village of Morge, and there they just sat out the remaining years of the war, not to mention the Russian Revolution, which broke out a couple of years later in Stravinsky's original hometown of St. Petersburg. During the war years, European orchestras and theater companies no longer had the resources to perform Stravinsky's massively orchestrated ballet scores, and his royalties from his German and Russian publishers just dried up completely. And so he found himself in dire financial straits. And as he did so often during his long and amazingly peripatetic life, he made an artistic virtue out of necessity and started composing music for much more spare, intimately scaled ensembles. There in the village of Morge, his landlord was the Swiss conductor Ernest Ansermey. And as it happened, Ansermey had just recently returned from a trip to America, where he had heard and become fascinated by American jazz and ragtime music. So he bought and brought back jazz band scores that he shared with Stravinsky, who became similarly intrigued by this strange, fresh, new kind of music making. Ansermé also introduced Stravinsky to his friend, the writer Charles Ferdinand Ramou, and they hit it off. And since Ramou was also badly in need of some income at that time, they decided that they would collaborate and create a small traveling musical theatrical troupe with which they could tour around in the villages of Switzerland. So Stravinsky introduced Ramou to a book of old Russian folk tales, and they selected and transformed one of the stories into Histoire du Soldat, the soldier's tale, which they set for narrator, two actors, a dancer, and a seven-piece mixed ensemble of winds and strings and percussion that Stravinsky modeled after the jazz band music that Ansermé had brought back with him from America. Stravinsky's musical score ingeniously combines old Russian folk styles of music with proto-Cubist parodies of popular dance music and American ragtime. And Ramu's story is a variation on the old Faust legend. We have a young soldier who is on leave from the war coming home to his village. And on the road, he meets the devil. And the devil persuades the soldier to trade his fiddle, which is a stand-in for his soul, for a magical book that will infallibly predict which way the financial markets are headed. So they make the trade. And as the ultimate in insider traders, the soldier becomes more and more financially wealthy as he becomes more and more spiritually impoverished. Finally, feeling completely depressed, he decides to trick the devil into playing him in a game of cards where he can deliberately lose back all of his ill-gotten gains. And this causes the devil to collapse. The soldier then reclaims his fiddle, marries a beautiful princess, and prepares to live happily ever after. But the devil suddenly wakes up and warns him that if he ever attempts to reclaim his former life by crossing the border back into his old village, that he will lose everything. And as so often happens in these kinds of fairy tales, his bride persuades him that it will be okay 
if he goes back just one time to fetch his aging mother because then he will really have everything. And so he goes. And as he nears the outskirts of his old village, the devil is lying in wait. And the instant that he steps over the border, the devil rises up, reclaims his fiddle soul, and marches him off to hell. The moral, of course, is be happy with what you've got. Don't be greedy. Don't try to have it all. The first performance of The Soldier's Tale took place in late September of 1918 at the main theater in Lausanne. And it was a stunning success, which seemed to augur well for this upcoming tour of the Swiss villages. But then the Spanish flu swept into Switzerland like the devil himself, taking down most of the cast and the musicians and the rest of the tour had to be canceled. And the next performance did not take place for several years after that. Does this sound a little familiar to you? Our own performance last December featured an all-star ensemble, including the fast-rising violin virtuoso Ben Bileman as the fiddler, the dancer-choreographer Annie Crowfoot as the princess, and the great English baritone actor Benjamin Luxon in the triple role of narrator, soldier, and devil. His performance was a brilliant tour de force, and I hope you will enjoy watching this exhilarating performance in this week's musical care package. <laughs> 